If you have been watching my channel for a while, you may remember over a year ago, I had my friend Dan on and we were talking about all things like finance related. So if you're in college or graduate school and you wanna understand like negotiating offers, internship offers, investing even, like I would highly recommend going to check out that video. But I got a lot of people reaching out saying how they found that video very useful and how they thought Dan had a lot of really great insight. And I also get a lot of emails about research related positions and how to get research roles after getting your PhD. And while I've interned on research teams in the past, all of my full-time positions have been non-research roles. So I thought, who better to have back on my channel than Dan, who is a researcher at Google Brain. And when we sat down to talk, we talked for like an hour and a half. And I thought all of the insights that Dan provided and all of the answers he gave were so interesting and so insightful that I didn't really want to cut a lot of it out. And instead of posting the entire hour and a half video, I decided to break it into segments. So I'll be posting them at separate times. And I apologize that the format that I recorded this video in is not exactly how I wanted it to be recorded in with Zoom, but all of the information is still there and I still wanted to share our entire conversation with you. So I hope you stick around and you watch all the videos in this series. And I will put at the beginning of all of these videos a list of what we talk about in the video so you can see whether it's of interest to you. And if you have questions for either me or Dan, please leave them in the comment section below. If they are for Dan, I'll make sure that he sees them. And I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. Is there anything that's like particularly different about interviewing for a research position versus interviewing for non-research positions? Because I've been asked to, I've been asked to defend papers. I've been asked to do presentations on some of my research, but with Google, it was more of like domain specific interviews. And then once you're past that, you can interview or talk with hiring managers from research divisions as well as non-research divisions. So it's different across the board, but I was wondering in your experience, have you noticed like anything particularly different between research versus non-research interviews? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, uh, so, so uh, as I kind of alluded to, right. So I actually didn't go directly, you know, one step from, you know, my PhD directly to, uh, you know, research, uh, at Google. Right. So, um, but I have interviewed for research roles before, right? And so uh, it's, I think it's exactly what you said, right? So for um, non-research roles, like traditional engineering roles, you will interview traditionally, you know, you have like these whiteboard coding interviews and they'll ask you things like, um, like graph and, you know, recursion and kind of linked list type problems, right? And then you have to answer them and they'll care, they care very little about your actual, you know, the, the bulk of your PhD, right? Um, for the uh, research roles, um, like for example, I interviewed with uh, MD Research, uh, you'd actually have to come in and give a talk, right? So you would uh, give a presentation about your research. They would ask you questions about your presentation, similar to how a uh, thesis, uh, your uh, PhD committee will ask about your thesis defense, right? And in fact, I actually interviewed with AMD Research prior to doing my thesis in defense, and it was a really, really good warm up because they asked some great questions, right? Um, the way I got into my current role is by team transferring, right? So um, I actually interviewed directly for a standards you know, software engineering role uh, within Google. And so I had to actually go through the standard Google you know, whiteboard coding process. They didn't care at all about my PhD, right? And, uh, but once I got into Google, right, I was able to leverage my existing PhD experience, right, with the problem solving and uh, my uh, domain expertise in computer architecture 
to basically transfer to a uh, research uh, role, right? And when you transfer like that, you actually don't need to re-interview. So I never went through the traditional uh, research scientist uh, interview at Google. How did they qualify then that you would be good in this role as like a researcher or research scientist versus like your previous software engineering role? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, so uh, one way that a lot of people transfer teams within Google is by first uh, working on what's called a 20% project uh, with your uh, future team. So a 20% project, if you're not familiar, is the uh, it's basically this um, side project that you work on um, at Google where you spend 20% of your time, um, so basically one work day, uh, on some other project besides the one that uh, your, your, your team is paying you to do, right? Um, so uh, usually for a 20% project, you need manager approval. So I actually uh, discussed uh, my desire to do a 20% project prior, with my future manager prior to me uh, signing the offer, right? So that was a good time to kind of discuss this um, because at that point, you still kind of have some, some leverage, right? So, um, and then uh, once I came into Google, right, I didn't jump into the 20% right away, uh, but, you know, I kind of, um, you know, worked for, let's say, about six months or so to make, make sure that, you know, I, I ramp up a bit, right? And then, you know, I look, kind of look within Google to see, you know, which types of teams uh, would be a good fit, right? So, um, and then, um, so uh, the team that I ended up, uh, uh, so, once you know, uh, I, I found some teams that were a good fit, right? I reached out to them via email, just cold contact. You know, they uh, responded back to me because 20% people are basically free labor, and so people are generally very interested in hiring 20 percenters. And so, um, and uh, I was able to kind of demonstrate, you know, uh, uh, you know, my 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 uh, let's let's say my research ability, right? Uh, by you know working on some project with them, right? So. Uh, you can say that it was like another, you can call it like a six month interview in some sense, right? Was there a rec open for, a, like, did they want to hire or did, did you just email teams regardless of whether there was like a position open on their team? Yeah, so 20% is more of like an informal uh, position, right? Like um, people do sometimes put in recs uh, for 20 percenters, but uh, you don't necessarily have to have a rec in order to do that. I think in this specific case, I did not have a rec. I just emailed them. And um, which, which in some sense is maybe a little bit, um, a little bit risky, right? So, um, but, you know, I did know, you know, from talking with uh, uh, folks within Brain, right, that uh, this team, you know, would be a good fit. And, um, you know, I, I, had, uh, I, I could say, oh, you know, so-and-so, I talked with so-and-so. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, they recommended that I reach out to you and things like that, which, you know, maybe adds a little bit more uh, credibility. Okay. I also want to ask you about your actual title, because in the doc that I made where I was like planning questions I wanted to ask you, I refer to you as a research scientist. And I think that's your official title at Google, at least when I look you up in the internal system. And I've, I've seen like, well, you changed it to researcher. And I've seen different titles at other companies that don't necessarily have research in the name. Like it could be like machine learning engineer or AI engineer, and they do some form of research. But I was wondering what all of the different, they're probably, you probably can't go through all of the different titles, but what are some of the different titles of people who do research in industry and like what, uh, like, I think your role is purely research, but I think some people do, like, combination. Can you talk a little bit about, like, different role titles and what the different levels of research are in industry? Yeah. So uh, I think in general, um, uh, at least, at, you know, based on my personal experience uh, at Google, I think the title is uh, not the most important uh, aspect that determines whether you're working on research or um product um I, I think it depends more on your team and kind of the team uh, culture there are some 
Sorry, there are some software engineers at Google who are on research teams, right? And they do do research. Yeah, I would say the software engineers uh, in general should actually outnumber the actual research scientists, right? On even on research team, because you know these days, um, you know, a lot of these um, for these cutting edge you know, machine learning training projects, right? It turns out that the software infrastructure is uh, you know, super important. Uh, in order to enable this research, right? And building up this, uh, this uh, software infrastructure is really, really challenging, right? So you wanna actually hire a lot of people for this. Um, so I think, um, uh, so, so my personal title, just to be uh, completely transparent, is in the system, right, is actually software engineer, right? Like I said, I was, uh, I interviewed for a software engineer role at Google, and so I got here through transferring, right? So I'm actually still a software engineer uh, officially, right? So research, so so basically at Google at least, there's different ladders for, uh, for different uh, titles. So a ladder is basically so, so like a, the like software engineer would be a ladder, for example, and it'll go through uh, let's say from you know L3 you know, software engineer all the way up to, uh, you know L, L I don't know what the top level is, uh, but it, it, it uh, L10 or you know something like that, right? Um, and there's a separate ladder for research scientists, right? And so research scientists and software engineers are both official ladder, ladder titles. And so that's why I cannot take on the research sci scientist title is because I don't want to trick people into believing, right, that I'm actually a part of the research scientist ladder, right? But within, uh, but internally, Google lets you set your title to wherever you want, right? So you can go in and change your title right now. You can change it to, you know, what, what I did, right, if, 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 the, if that's something that you want to do, right? And so um, a lot of research roles uh, externally are marketed uh, by recruiters as being R suites, right? Research software engineers or research engineers or something like that, right? So these are actually just normal suites, right? So with, if you get hired to Google uh, as uh, from applying to an R suite position, you actually just be uh, listed internally as a regular suite, right? But the reason why they call it an R suite is because technically you're on a research team, right? So this is something, this is a term that they invented, which is not part of the official uh, ladder system, right? So um, within uh, my team, at least, the culture is that um, SWEs and RSs, no matter which ladder you're on, uh, can work on whatever project you choose, right? As long as it's something important and your manager agrees you should be working on it and you're making good progress on it, right? And so that is almost completely dependent on your own capabilities and your own initiative, right? So um, when when I joined uh, this team, I was very um, um, uh, I was very interested in getting kind of back to uh, my research uh, roots, uh, and um, I was um, and because you know I've been productive, right? Uh, even though I'm officially a SWE and not an RS. Uh, you know, they um, are quite happy to have me, you know, continue working on, you know, research related roles. But I think in general, right, um, so at least on my team, right, um, one of the ways we're uh, evaluated is based on impact, right? And impact, um, even on research teams, will include uh, product impact, right? So at the end of the day, if all you do is submit a paper, um, then, you um, uh, that's not necessarily, you know, considered to be good impact, right? Unless uh, your paper kind of, um, you know, changes the way, uh, like, like helps, you know, change the research field as a whole, right? That can also be impact, right? But that type of impact is considered to be weaker than actual product impact, which impacts, you know, Google revenue, right? So uh, even, so in that sense, right, even research scientists uh, within Google uh, actually uh, will tend to also work on some product impact, right? Because, you know, people tend to be, uh, you know, very ambitious here and, you know, they want to get promoted and get good uh, performance ratings. And the quickest way of doing that is by actually having a uh, product Oh, boy.